Good morning everyone, I'm TJ and today I want to show you how to translate and rotate finite element models and other mechanism objects in FedEM. I'll teach you how to use the smart move command in combination with 3D stickers in order to both translate and rotate mechanism parts with just a single command. I'll also show you how to use the align objects commands that enable you to align uh, one or several joints to a common reference frame. And I'll uh, teach you that the smart move command is somewhat limited. It works well for open loop structures, but if you want to assemble a closed loop mechanism from scratch, you should actually do it in the CAD system instead. Uh, CAD systems like NX supports both kinematics and configuration control as well as uh, assembly meshing. And my advice is that you create an assembly FEM so that each finite element component or FEM will be properly located and oriented in the mechanism assembly. And then you can export uh, each and one of them uh, to a single part in FEDEM. And when you use a common reference coordinate system during export, uh, the mechanism parts will be properly positioned and oriented in the FEDEM assembly. So that's best practice. So let's have a look at how these commands work in FEDEM. This is the, the jack model I will use to demonstrate the smart move commands in FEDEM. But first I want to show you best practice. Uh, this mechanism is uh, modeled and assembled in NX and I've applied uh, boundary conditions and assembly constraints and then I'm able to easily change the initial position that I will use in FEDEM, like this. Uh, if I do it that way, I can create an assembly FEM. I don't want to show you how to do that because that's covered in a separate video. And then I can export each FEM component to FEDEM as an in, in, uh, individual link or part, FEDEM part. Uh, you can also do it a uh, perhaps simpler way. You can wave link all the geometries into a single assembly part and then you can mesh the individual volumes and apply RB2s and RB3 elements in between, which you can use to connect the assembly in FEDEM. Uh, if you do so, uh, the assembly in FEDEM is really simple and I'll show you why. Here is an empty FEDEM model file and um, in order to import the uh, FEM models, just click on import link and then I mark all these Nastran bulk data files. And since they are meshed in the proper position, I can open them and they will pop up in my window immediately in the right position. However, you're not always that lucky and sometimes you need to use the smart move command in order to position the parts. The first thing you should do then is to change the view settings and uh, here I switched on the, the outline view. I'm not showing all the lines or the mesh. I use outline. And then I have uh, changed the transparency settings. So now I can see through the model. And that's uh, useful. Uh, sometimes it's also smart to just uh, select the line view. Then it's easy to snap to the, to the RB2 elements, the center nodes which are frequently used as uh, connection points for joints. You usually use RB2s or RB3s. Here I have switched on the yellow color on this part and the mesh view, so it shall be simple to see what happens. Um, I select the smart move command and then Fedem prompts me for the point to move from and then I can select one of these points. And here you see the symbol that tells me that this part is free to translate in all three directions. And when I've selected uh, the point I want, I can accept the choice with enter. And then I can select the two point. And let's select this one, for example, and then press enter to accept the choice. Then you see it will be animated to the next position. I know you see that a 3D sticker has uh, popped up, which keep this part fixed in this point. So this will work as a 3D snap symbol. And now if I use uh, the smart move command once more, you see that it will not translate this time. Here you see a ball joint symbol, 
because this sticker will now act like a ball joint. And I select this as the from point, I accept it, and I select this point as the to point. And then the part will not translate, but it will rotate. Now you can imagine that we have two stickers here, and uh, the line between them will now be the rotational line, or uh, symmetry line. And now I can choose, for example, to move from this point to another point. And here you see that it's not a ball joint anymore, it's like a revolute joint, because it will rotate all around this uh, virtual line. And I can accept this as the from point, and let's select any other point here as the to point. We could choose a point on this part, for example, and accept the choice. And now you see I will rotate it around the line, and I will have three sticker symbols. And if I now try to uh, move this part once more, I will have a kind of brick symbol here that tells me that the part now is completely locked. If you want to release the part again, you can go to Mechanism and then delete all stickers. And then you can move it again. You can select the from point and you see it's free to translate. So let's try to position it back where it came from. And uh, let's uh, choose one of these from points. Uh, I have two spiders here, RB2 or RB3 elements. And let's choose this as the from point. And then I want to position it here. Then it snaps to the right location there. And then we can try to align this point here. It will now rotate around the first point and let it snap to this point. There it comes. And now it's almost back where it came from. But let's align it so it matches the other point here. We can choose this point as the from point. And now I have two stickers working and it will rotate around the line defined by the two stickers. And then I want to rotate it to a point here. Perhaps a turn to the line view in order to properly select this point. Let's zoom so I can make sure it's the right one. And then press enter. And now it's aligned again. Then I will show you how to position and orient revolute joints, or joints in general. Uh, I want to apply four revolute joints between the top bracket and these two arms. And I want to align them uh, along the center axis of the holes on each side. So let's start creating a revolute joint. And now I show you a trick. If I choose the surface of an element, Fedem will automatically snap to the closest node and I can accept the choice. And here you can see that the joint um, automatically is aligned so that the revolute axis will point in the surface normal of the element. And that's what that was my intention. But it's not properly aligned and if we switch to line view and perhaps uh, also to outline view, you can tell that there is a 3D sticker symbol that keeps this in a locked position. So I first have to get rid of that one, delete all stickers, and then I'm ready to use the smart move command to move this joint, it turned red, so it means that it will be selected and moved. And these symbols show me that it's free to translate. And I accept the front point with enter, and then I select the center point and accept the choice. I know it's properly positioned and properly aligned. Um, then I can check if it's um, properly positioned by attaching it to the 
arm and to the top bracket <coughs> and it turned yellow that means it's attached so that's good but then I want to apply or make four more joints press the revolute joint again and I select one here and I select one there and one there um, I'm not sure about the alignment here so I have to make sh sure that they are pointing in the same direction otherwise I will have some really bad constraint forces so what I can do is to use the smart move command once more and I grab the tail of the revolute joint and you see by the symbol that it's allowed to rotate around this um, sticker and then I select this as my front point and I select this center point as the two point and then you see it will be aligned although you can see that the start of the revolute joint is not the same but it's aligned and positioned then I'll show you another smart way of aligning the joints there is a command here called align rotations you must not use the align coordinate systems because that will also move and align them so I choose align rotations and I select this joint and I keep the control button down while I select the other two as well and then I accept the choice with enter and then I select this to be my reference you see I selected the joint but the local coordinate system here was then selected and then I press enter and you see they automatically align themselves to this one so now I have four joints which are correctly positioned and aligned. Then I will give you a brief introduction to the odometer. And uh, let's create another revolute joints here. Now it's properly positioned, but it's probably not um, properly oriented. So now I could use the smart move command once more and I could drag the tail of the joint so it was aligned with the center of this hole. That would be the easiest way. But I can also do it a different way. I can use the smart move command and then I grab the tail, that's the front point, and I press enter. And then I could choose uh, this point here. But in case I didn't have that point, I can show you how to do it. I can go to this odometer. First I click on this point, which could be the two point. But then I have to offset uh, a certain set value from this point. So I can choose to use it in local or global coordinates. Let's use global. And then you see the set value here is 0 0.005. If I give the value of 1 there, or we could use 0 0.1 or even less, so we can see the symbol. Here you see I selected this point. Um, perhaps I should give minus because then I have this point. That will be my two point. So now I didn't select a point or a node on the structure, but an arbitrary point in 3D space. And I used the odometer. And then I select the choice by enter. Or done. Now you see that the joint aligned itself. And this is a common technique in many situations where you use, for example, spring stampers and so on to use the odometer. If you want to practice on smart move commands, uh, then you should use this check model. It's uh, available on its learning. And um, it's nice because it includes lots of joints, revolute joints, prismatic joints, cylindrical joints and other types. And these have to be really good aligned, properly aligned, in order to avoid constrained forces. Because in a rigid body system, uh, these uh, parts will be over constrained, but not in Phenom. But you need to align the joints properly. And then, if you're good and you have completed the model, you can simulate it with the control system. Uh, and then you can uh, reveal if the motor is strong enough, the power supply is good enough. And you can then find the reason why this track was recalled from the market by Biltema, Jura and Tosh of last year. And you can uh, load it with two tons on top and see what happens 
when it approaches its lower position. Then you'll probably find out that there are many reasons why it was recalled. Not only electric failure and underdimensioning, but also buckling like this. Thanks for watching.